about how to get booked on stages. So how do you get yourself booked? How we get speakers booked? That's what we're going to go over today. Any questions you got, make sure you ask the questions. And we're just going to go over that. How do you get booked? So let's see who's hopping on real quick. All right, all right. Let's see. What up, Maggie? Oh, I always one of the first to, to pop on. Nice. That's why Maggie's getting booked, everybody. That's why she's getting booked. Uh, I can't tell you in terms of the speed of implementation that she has compared to other people. And I talked about this a while ago with um, uh, with a friend where I was saying like, yeah, there's certain people where I can tell instantly that they're going to get results just because of the speed of implementation. You, you can almost always tell who's going to get results with anything based on how fast they implement everything. And that's that uh, that's. That's what it comes down to is the speed of implementation. But today we are going to talk about how do you get booked just like all the other days. How do you get booked, right? If you have any questions, make sure you ask the questions, all you Facebook peeps, and we'll answer some of the questions. But once again, I'm going to go over the entire process from start to finish. How do you get booked consistently, by the way? So it's not enough to get booked once. You got to get booked multiple times over and over and over again. You got to put those systems in place. That way you know exactly what to do the second you wake up, from the second you go to sleep, you just know what to do. You don't want to be one of those speakers who wakes up asking yourself, how do I find gigs? Asking yourself, what do I say to these people? Asking yourself, like, how do I get booked? You don't want to be one of those speakers. You got to put the systems in place, repeat it over and over and over till you get good at it. Once you're good at it, you'll just naturally start getting more gigs. What up, Wani? What up, Paul? All right, what up, peeps? All the other people who joined, for some reason, not showing everybody else who joined. All right, what up, David? So let's go over that uh, once again, I want to go over the, the entire process from start to, to finish, and if you guys have any questions, make sure you ask the questions. Maybe we'll go over some websites, so if you guys want to post your, your website, post a link to your website, we'll go over that as well, because I'm going to talk about websites, of course. So honestly, it just comes down to two things that you're really doing. First, you get your website up. Second, you get your sales process down, and you repeat it over and over. It's like you, you get the website up, you make it as good as possible to begin with, and then you, you build the sales process. You start finding and contacting events. Once you get booked, you improve your website. So it's just like a circle. It's like your website, you do the sales process, you, you find contact events, you get booked. Then once you get booked, you get all that stuff, the videos, the, the testimonials, you improve your website again, which helps you get booked again, which makes you improve the website again. And you just go in this, this circle over and over and over. And that's what you're doing to get booked. It really is like a cycle, a circle. What up, Joy? Cool, cool. David. All right. So David posted his website. In case you guys didn't hear, for those of you who joined later, um, you guys can actually post a link to your website and we'll we'll see if I have time to, to go over it as well. For you Speak Pro Academy members, you can always post inside the group, all you Speak Pro Academy members. Uh, remember, if you are a Speak Pro Academy member, post inside the group. Post your the email conversations you're having. We'll go over those in terms of what you're saying to the events. We'll go over your websites. We'll go over all that stuff inside the group. Uh, and you guys just get more detail than, than everybody else. What's up, Glenn? So let, let's get to it. Let's let's talk about the, the process. Let, let me show you guys this. So this is literally the process from start to finish. You guys might want to screenshot this if you want. Let's let's see. So here we go. This right here. This is basically the, the process uh, in terms of just filling up your, your schedule. So first, I mean, obviously you're picking a market, you're starting with the market, you're going to set up the systems, you're going to have your website in place, you're going to start implementing those systems, uh, start doing the, the prospecting. When you get booked, you're going to implement a referral system in terms of what you do at the event. You're going to repeat the process, and then you're going to optimize the process. Now, I just went over that really quick, so let's go over it really slow. All right, so... First thing you, you have to do is you have to make sure that you're in the right market. So if this is why a lot of speakers kind of get confused in terms of getting paid just because they're in the wrong market. So they, they want to get paid gigs, but they start contacting conferences. And I said this several times. You'll hear me say this several times uh, in the future as well. If you contact conferences and seminars, you will have a hard time getting paid just because of the way they think about speakers. They see a speaker as an expense, whereas companies, and they're hosting like a, an annual Halloween party, Christmas party or whatever, these companies see you as an investment. So you have to make sure you're, you're in a market where they see you as an investment, not an expense. 
right? And you also want to make sure that you're describing yourself the right way. Don't say something like, I'm a transformational expert. Don't say things like that. Nobody types that stuff in into Google. You got to think, what are people typing into Google in order to find you? What do they type in to find speakers like you? They do not type in stuff like transformational expert. They type in things like a sales speaker, motivational speaker, inspirational speaker, leadership speaker. They type in those types of things into Google. So if, if anything, what you want to do, well, just, just go to Google and go to like a keyword search. Use a keyword planner. Go there and type in whatever you think people type in. Type that into the keyword planner and it will tell you how many people type that stuff in. So let, let's actually... I'll show you a brief version of this. So let, let's type in motivational speaker and let's type in transformational expert, right? So let, let's let's see real quick. So motivational speaker, let's see. If you look up here where it says volume, look, look at that. So it says volume, uh, 12,000, basically 12,000 a month, right? That's the volume in terms of motivational speakers. That, that's if you're paying for like AdWords and stuff. And then here, transformational expert, look at this. It says volume zero. Like literally nobody types that stuff in, right? And so you got to look at that. You got to ask yourself, am I describing myself in a way where people actually type that into Google? If they're not, if, if, if I mean, if you're describing yourself in a weird way like that, then you just can't get found. People won't understand what it is you do. So that's the very first thing you got to do, all right? So what's up, Glenn? What up, Christina? What up, Kara? By the way, guys, make sure if you want to post your, your website, I'm going to go over a couple websites in just a second. So if you want to post your website, you can do that. But just understand that to begin with. So the first step that you're going to be doing is understanding exactly what it is you, you need to describe yourself as in terms of the market that you want to get hired for. After that, let's go here. What's the next step? Next step, you set up your systems. So this is the point where you go, you buy a CRM, you buy an email tracking software like Yesware, you're writing your email templates. If you're, if you're not a member, you gotta write the templates yourself. If you are a member, we got all the templates for you and we got all the stuff for you if you're a member. Uh, you gotta have a checklist of ways to find events. You have to start setting up your systems. Okay. If, if you're not setting up your systems, it's just going to, you're just going to wake up wondering what the hell do I do today? That's what's going to happen every single time. So let's see. Hi guys. Glad to be here and learning. Nice. What up, Johnny? Cool. Cool. And, and by the way, for those of you hopping on, make sure you, you can post you a link to your website. Let, let me actually, let's type some of this stuff in. Let's see. Running a, running a, um, momathon.com <laughs> like that. Uh, let's see. Robert Harion.com. Cool, cool. So we got those popping up. What's up, Nick? All right. So let's go back. So, like I said, uh, what you're going to do is first, you're, you're basically picking the right market. Uh, then you got to set up your system. So, whatever CRM you're going to buy, make sure you buy a CRM. Make sure you set up the email templates. Uh, make sure you buy the email tracking software. Make sure you have a system for finding events. And, and that's going to take some time if you don't buy something like Speak Pro Academy, where you don't, where we just give it to you, right? So, if, if you have to create the email templates yourself, here's, what's, here's what you're going to do. In the beginning, you're going to sit there and you're going to contact events and you're not going to really be sure in terms of what to write. So you're going to think like, what do I write? What do I say to these events? You're going to write it down, right? Save that. Whatever you write to an event, save it. Copy and paste that, that pitch, copy and paste whatever you're writing into a document and you're going to try to improve it every single time. Try to improve what you're saying, what you're pitching, the conversations you're having. Try to improve it every single time. In the beginning, you're going to go a lot slower just because, I mean, it's like anything that you're learning. You got to go slow to make sure you're doing it right. So that, that's what's going to happen in the beginning. All right, let's see some other websites here. Let's see, Sir John, Sir Johnny.net. So let's make sure that one's coming up. All right, so I'm going to go over a couple websites in just a second. Let's go over Let's see who's at coachatjones.com. All right. Let's see. Christina said it's under construction, but I'm glad it's under construction, but I'm glad to have you look at it. Cool, cool. Uh, if it's under construction, I'll probably tell you to just redo the whole thing. <laughs> so, all right. So let, let's see. 
All right, I'm going to go over the websites in just a second. But remember, in the beginning, you got to first thing, you're picking the market, and then you're setting up your systems. That way, the systems, all you're going to do is repeat the process over and over. So you got to make sure that you're setting up the right systems. So you're going to go buy a CRM. It doesn't really matter what CRM you're using. It's not about the CRM. It's like a CRM is like buying a phone, right? So it doesn't matter what phone you buy. They're all practically the same. Sure, there's small differences between Android and iPhone, between the Samsung and whatever else, whatever other Android phones there are. There are small differences, but phones are phones. I mean, you can do the same thing. You can you can shoot pictures, you can take videos, you can put contacts in there. They're all they all do the same thing. The difference between the guy who makes money with a phone and someone else is the guy. It's or the guy or the girl. It's the person behind it that's making the money, not the system, not the phone. So it's the same with the CRM. It's it's not the CRM that's making you any money. It's a person behind that CRM who's no, who knows how to use it. And so that's essentially what uh, that's essentially what you have to understand when it comes to CRMs, right? So make sure you go buy a CRM. Doesn't matter which one it is. Set it up. Set up your pipeline in terms of the incoming questions, quote contract closed. Make sure it's in that order. That way you follow that every single time. The order is the same every single time, right? So let's see. Autopilot is what I play with. <laughs> nice. So he said. Um, Go look anyways. All right. It's it's not undone. Just upgraded my services. Cool. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So we will look over those in just a second. All right. So let's see. Make sure you set up the, the system. So that, that's the, the step. You set up the systems. After the systems, that's when you're, you're going to, to the websites, right? So the, the websites, once you have your systems in place, now you have a process, right? You have all these in place. Now you have a process, but now you got to make sure that you get a website up. That way people know in terms of like, how good are you? Like, are you a good speaker, great speaker, sucky speaker? They, they want to know in terms of how good you are. So let the, the website, and I, I say this like a million times, your website is similar to like your clothing to where if you go in and you're wearing a suit, people are going to, I mean, it's, it's just going to be easier to get hired on like a job interview. Whereas if you're wearing a, a torn t-shirt and jeans and stained t-shirt, it's going to be harder to get hired versus if you're in a suit. Well, it's going to be easier to get hired in a suit, right? So that's, that's your website. The better your website, the less people you have to contact and the more often you're going to get hired at higher prices and higher speaking fees, right? So Make sure you get a really great website. So let's go over some of your guys' websites real quick. So let's see. All right. So here's David's website. Cool, cool. So David, I would fix, um, what is this, the, the Divi theme, I believe. All right. Cool, cool. Yes, I think you're using the, the Divi theme. So what you want to do with the, the website, first thing that you do with your website is you start with the layout of the website. So when I look at this, um, I, I can tell that you were essentially kind of uh, emulating the layout of, of my one of my websites, the .NET one. But l l let me show you this. So let me show you my website. Actually, I haven't even updated this website. We, we still got to update this website. But basically, you were emulating the, the layout of, of this. Let's let this thing load. So I, like I, can, I can tell you did that. Man, I hate that YouTube did this. YouTube just added this thing. Oh, that's that's a whole other story. But th this is the layout of of one of my websites, right? And I can see that that you were emulating this layout, David. Nothing wrong with with that. But the thing is, do you see the difference between yours versus mine? Like, do do you see the the difference? It's like the the images. You got to look at the the images. Uh, in, in the, the overall layout of it, there, there's a huge difference, right? Even though you're trying to emulate it, you, you gotta, if you're gonna, if you're gonna model someone's website, you want to damn near copy the thing uh, because, and the, the reason for that is because they thought it through. They probably thought it through. It's probably really good. I mean, if it's good enough to model, it's good enough to damn near copy, to damn near emulate, right? And, and so, all you want to do, David, is if you want to model this, there's going to be the header, there's that, the text. Uh, here, uh, you didn't include the, it's like here after the, the video, there's this part with the reviews. You didn't include that, so you want to include this part as well with the reviews. 
And then even like with the image here, so with the image, notice how there's the, the event room that's, it's like a double exposure effect and the people there as well. So like this right here with the image of me, it's better than just having an image like that, right? Because you can tell this is, this is like a designed, this was like neatly designed, whereas this one you just took a picture and just put it there. And so little things like that have an effect on people. People can see this, they can see like, oh, okay, that's like professionally done, and this, it was just like an image just thrown there, right? So you wanna make sure that 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 you just focus on the images, right? So that, that's what I would, I would do there. Uh, here I would, uh, th this, the, the bottom part here looks kinda weird, where it's the bar with these, with the social media parts, and then you have this, the podcast and reviews. This kinda looks, I don't know what it is about that, that that looks weird, but like here, notice how mine, it looks very clean. So it's like you scroll down, you see the social media parts, then you see these two parts here. It looks very clean, whereas yours has the, the bar, which makes it look kind of weird because with the bar, it would seem like this would be the end of the website. Like this would be, the website would be done. When I get to the bottom here, this would be the footer of the website. But then I scroll and then bam, there's just two things right there. It's just like, huh, what's that? And so it looks kind of weird with that. So little things like that really matter uh, with the, the website. If you're going to duplicate someone's website, then basically you have to use a similar theme or actually the same thing theme to their website. This is not using Divi. So it, it would be hard to, to copy this because it's just not using Divi. All right, so that, that's, that's the first thing. First thing I look at is the overall layout of the website. So the, the layout, it's it's okay, like basically here the top part is good, here up to the video is good, and then after that it's kind of like, huh, what's going on, right? So I feel like there needs to be something where this line is, there needs to be something there, and then you can have the rest of that, and then you're, you're, you're good to go. Now I would get rid of that, by the way, or move this up. So I would move these two things up, that's what I'd do, all right? Cool, cool, so that's what I'd do there. Let's see the, the next website here. All right, so let's scroll through here. Remember with the websites, people are scrolling through first. And also remember, people are looking at your website on their phones, so it really looks like this. So we'll, we'll look at your guys' websites like this to begin with. All right, let's, let's do this. Okay, so here's what your website actually looks like when, they're, when, they're, when they click on a link inside of your, your email. So this, overall look like what I would change on here I would change the images I would like try to improve the images like I can tell this image here with the red this was designed so this image looks pretty nice and this is like an image that you would want to use on your header and then also like the text the text is too hard to read and so the the text I would change up the the, the font of the the text because it's hard to read if anyone has to if you make people work then they, they won't, right? So if you make them work to read your text, they just won't do it. So that, that's why you, you don't want them to, to work. You don't wanna use text like this. You can use it once or something like that. Like let's say, let's say here, like th this is a good example in terms of how to use that font. So you use the font at the very end, but 99% of the font looks professional. It just looks good, looks clean, I can read the thing, and then at the very bottom you have this one uh, font that, that's a little harder to read. So you can do something like that, but I wouldn't have a lot of it on your on your website. Okay, And then also I'm thinking, if I'm a meeting planner, I'm thinking to myself, all right, what about this person on stage? How is this person on stage? And nowhere on your website do you demonstrate to me how you are on a stage. So it's like I see the pictures of you, but I don't see any reactions that you're getting. I don't see any crowds. I don't see anything, any videos. There's nowhere to go for the video footage. Like you're not telling me click here to see videos. None of that stuff, right? You're telling me here to learn more, follow you on Facebook, join your community, but there's nothing in terms of watch me in action. So you wanna think in terms of, you gotta understand that people are, People are thinking to themselves, what is this person going to be like when I actually pay them to be on a stage? And so that's what they're thinking, and that's what you have to communicate on your website. So that, that's, that's what I would do. Those are the few changes I would make on, on your site. Um, and then, of course, as always, I think in terms of images. So it's like, uh, 
yeah, just in terms of images, I, I would just think in terms of like how to improve all the, the images on, on the website. Your images aren't bad just because, I mean, it looks like a professionally made image, but I would still think in terms of just little designs on, on these images. Let's see. Uh, let's see. So like, let me show you guys. So like the, these images, right? Oh, dang it. Let me see if I can blow this up real quick. So you can see like the, these images are, are designed in a way that, that makes it look better than if it was just a normal looking image. And even this one, I just, I just did these quick. The thumbnails I tend to do very quick, but, um, yeah, just focus on the, the images on, on your websites. So little things like this, let's go to this one as well. So like, let, let's say the, the podcast, like let's say instead of this image of me here, let's say it was an image of a podcast uh, type thing. And then I say like, click here to listen to our podcast or something. There was a button there. This is a cool image to have for something like that. And in fact, I actually did that on, on one of my sites here. So let me show you the image for the for the podcast thing. So let's scroll down. Where is it? Here we go. So like here. So like see this image right here, uh, the 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 background. Little things like that. It matters when it comes to to your website. So you really do want to focus on the images, right? So just understand that with with your website. So we are good to go on that one. Let's take a look at Roberts. Robert, I would start out with. Um, Let's see, yeah, I would change the layout of your website. So I don't know what theme you're using, but I would change the layout of your website for sure. Let's see what theme you're using here. If it'll pop up, nope. So I guess you're not using a WordPress thing, but I would change the layout of the website. And the layout is just the overall look of your of your website, okay? So let's see, what was it? Christina said, uh, what design program do you use? So I use, um, it's WordPress with a Divi theme. That's That's what I use. So he said, I'm a consultant who does retreats. All right. Cool, cool. So if you're if you're a consultant who does retreats, then dang it, I deleted your, your website. Uh, what was your website again, Christina? Yeah, I closed out on your website, so I can't go back to it. Let's see if it uh nope. Yeah, just post your website again so I can take a look at it again. Uh, if you are like let's say a consultant or a coach or something like that. You're going to design a website very differently than a keynote speaker. So a keynote speaker is focused more on hiring them and the experience of hiring them, right? So you're selling the speech, the, the $10,000, the $15,000 speech. You're selling the experience of hiring you. If you're a coach or a consultant, then what you do with as a coach or cons consultant, you're focusing on the problem that you solve for those people, and that's what your entire website is about. So it's like uh, if I'm a sales trainer, I say, all right, uh, we, we increase your sales by 200% or whatever. I mean, you, you want to come up with a better problem that you solve than that, but, but still, you focus on the problem that you solve. If you're a coach, consultant, building a brand type thing, you're focusing on the problem, whereas if you want to get paid gigs, you're focusing on the experience of hiring you. You're talking about how funny the presentation is, how engaging it is, and you're showing the experience of that. If you're, all right, let, yeah, let's go back to, to yours, running, cool, so running a, a momathon. So if, if you're focusing on the coaching and consulting, then what you're doing is you have to focus on that problem. So let's go back here. So you said transform frustration to fruition. So here, like once again, I would, I would definitely change the, I would, I would change the, the text just because it's, it's hard to read, right? So I'd change that. And here, you want to ask yourself, what does this even mean, right? So you want to get very clear. What, what I tell people is you want to get so clear on on the the problem that you solve that it can't be misconstrued with something else. So if I say to you, we get speakers booked on stages, that is very clear. I mean, it's very clear about the problem that we solve. If I say we help speakers or uh, yeah, we help newbies overcome anxiety from speaking speaking or we help people with the fear of public speaking right so it's, it's very clear like if you're afraid of speaking then we help you not be afraid 
On the other hand, if I say uh, transform frustration to fruition, you want to get more clear. Obviously, people can think about that and what that really means, but still you want to get clear on the, the specific problem. Like the problem in terms of what are people typing into Google, that's how you want to think about it. What do people type into Google? So people don't type in, how do I transform frustration into fruition? They don't type that into Google. What they type in is, uh, frustrated at what? So it's like, uh, I don't even know, like, like, all right, I, uh, I'm a mom. How do I get my kids to eat vegetables? Right? So something like that, they would type that in. How do I get my kids to eat vegetables? And so that would be your thing right there. Here's how you get your kids to eat vegetables. We teach moms how to get their kids to eat, eat vegetables. So it's very clear in terms of the problem that you're solving. If you're doing something like that, right? So let's see, Joyce said, I'm a healer and want to have one website for my healing and workshops and a new website as I move into motivational speaking. That is exactly what you do, Joy. So you have one website for the healing and, and workshops and a completely separate website for keynote speaking. You have to do that because they're two different markets, right? So if you have your website where it just talks about healing and workshops, then the people who want to hire you pay $15,000, they go to that website, they look at it, they're like, all right, we, we don't really care about workshops. We're not looking for workshops. We're not looking for healing. We're looking for a funny motivational speaker. And then they'll just discount you altogether. On the other hand, if you have a separate website where the separate website says the funniest motivational speaker in the world, then they're going to say, all right, I'm in the right place. And so that's why you definitely want to have the, the two different websites. So smart move. All right, so let's see. He says, so I address marriage, motherhood, and motivation. All right, cool. So wh what you want to do, you want to pick one of those because uh, all of them are, are very different. So you can have motivation. Motivation should always be there no matter what it is you're doing because you always got to motivate people. But motherhood and marriage are two different things, completely different things, right? So you got to you gotta address one of them first. You got to say in terms of like, uh, I help people uh with broken marriages or whatever, you want to come up with something better than that. But you got to you got to think in terms of what's the specific problem that you're solving with marriages. What's the specific problem you're solving with motherhood? And you got to ask yourself like, how big are those markets? I'm sure the the, the married market is really big. The the mom market is really big. But also in terms of the problem that you solve for each market. So when it comes to marriages, maybe the problem is uh, like. I don't know, people are like, all right, we're, well, we've been married for X amount of years and I just don't feel the passion anymore. And so you say, um, you talk about how, how you help them with re reconnecting that, that passion that they once had when they, when they first started dating. Right. And so you're talking about that sort of thing. Think about how the text on your website is going to be very different from marriages. If you're saying, here's how we help you reconnect the passion that you once had. So the, all the text is going to be around. Do you remember the first date that you went on? Do you remember the, the butterflies in your stomach that you had? And then you'll have like an image where there's going to be like a couple and like, you'll see a couple like kiss each other. And then there's, you'll see like inside of them, like the double exposure effect, you'll see like butterflies inside their bellies and you'll have like an image of that. Right. So that, that's what I mean by, you got to get specific on the problem that you're solving. If you're going to do workshops and, and, and workshops, coaching, consulting, that sort of thing, you're getting very specific about the problem. Right. And that's why you have to choose one of them. So you said, but they go hand in hand for my ladies, uh, but I will put it all together in a better way. Uh, sure. Okay, so that's like saying, it's like saying, all right, so for men, I'm going to teach you fitness and how to pick up women. They go hand in hand, right? So it's like, sure, I mean, getting fit and, and learn how to pick up women, men want to learn both, right? But still, if, if I were to say both on my website, they wouldn't know which one to actually go with. Like, the, I'm not an expert in either one because I'm, I'm saying I'm, I talk about all of it, right? Basically, what you're saying is that moms, well, women are interested in all of these things, which they are, but you can only solve one problem for them at a time. So you have to choose one. Otherwise, you simply, you're going to confuse people. And, and it's, it's one of those things it's just a matter of focus. If you try to do two things at once, like there's two lines here and you're, you're talking about marriage, talking about marriage, then all of a sudden you stop that. Now you start talking about motherhood, you go there and then you stop that. You start talking about marriage again, you go there and then you start talking about motherhood again. It's, it's going to take you too long to get to the end. 
That's why you keep hearing people say you got to niche it down. You got to have the niche and, and that sort of stuff. You keep hearing all the marketing experts say that because it is true. In the beginning, you, you niche it down to where it's so specific that it can't be confused with everything else. Think about how any business grew, any business, any single one. What people are trying to do is they're trying to become Amazon. They're trying to say, well, Amazon sells everything. Amazon, they, they sell kitchen appliances, they sell clothing, they sell books, they sell everything. Why can't I do that? That's because Amazon started selling books. They didn't sell everything to begin with. They started out selling books. Then they eventually sold everything. Facebook, same way. Facebook wasn't for everybody. Facebook was literally just for Harvard students. It wasn't even for college students. It was for Harvard students. Then they said, let's go to, I think it was Yale or Stanford, one of the other ones. And they went to the other one. Eventually, they finally said, oh, it's for all college students. Eventually, they said, okay, it's for everybody, right? That's what Facebook did. And then finally, they said, oh, we even have a kid version for all the young kids, right? That's what you do. And if you try to do everything, you'll end up getting nothing done. So you have to make sure you niche it because that's what that's how you're going to build the skills of copywriting, of presenting, creating content, having uh, your workflow down, having the, the opt in, all that sort of stuff. So think about if you're trying to build your list, right? You're trying to build your list to get people to workshops and which one is more which one is going to actually get people to the workshop more? If you say, uh, we help you with marriages and motherhood and motivation versus we help women who are, who are having problems with their marriage, you're just very specific. We help you if your husband is cheating on you, right? Then they identify with that more. They're, they're like, oh yeah, my husband's cheating on, damn it, how do I, what the heck, right? And so they identify with that more so you'll get more people to sign up, more people to, to do everything just because you, you niched it, right? So it, it, eventually you can expand it. Like eventually there's nothing wrong with this expanding just like Facebook, Amazon, everybody, right? Eventually you can become uh, Tony Robbins where Tony Robbins talks about damn near everything. Marriage, uh, let's see, destiny, motivation, business stuff. Tony Robbins talks about damn near everything. But in the beginning he didn't. In the beginning all Tony Robbins was was a sales speaker. That's all he was. And, and eventually he switched to leadership and he was like changing and shifting, trying to figure out which niche to, to really make money at. But in the beginning, he was a sales speaker and that's what he talked about. So in the beginning, you cannot do everything. You simply can't. Right. So let's see. Yes, for consultants. I used to pitch solutions first, but now I pitch the problem and show them the solution. Yep, exactly. All right. So there, there's that. Uh, let's do this. Let's see another website real quick. All right, so let, let's, whoops, what did I do there? Oh, dang it, I just, I just got rid of that website, I think. Oh, no, I didn't. All right, so, yeah, here we go. So, like, what I would do, Robert, with your website is I would change the overall theme, the overall layout, because, like, as I look at this, it just, it's, it, it, it doesn't really, this, I mean, the theme itself seems like it could be nice, like, it could look good, but you haven't made it look good. And so you got to think in terms of making it look good. So let's see. So like here, here's what I mean by layouts, guys. So like I'm going to let one of these layouts load. This, this is what we do inside the Speak Pro Academy, guys. So like let's say with all these layouts, let's say I'm a fitness trainer. They have a fitness trainer one. All right. So let's, oh, this is a fitness gym one. Let's go to the fitness trainer one. There we go. So this is a personal trainer. So let's say I'm a personal trainer and bam, I load this layout. And then, bam, like instantly, my entire website just looks good, like instantly, right? Look at how clean this layout is. The way, the way it curves like that with the images, look at how clean this thing looks, right? So, I mean, you got to wait for stuff to load, but it looks, it looks really nice. It's just nice and clean. And with the layout, what I'm doing is I load this layout or, or any layout, I load a layout. And then I insert my own stuff. So they have the picture here. I would put my uh, my picture there. And then I, instead of personal trainer, I put motivational speaker. And then here I'd put my name or something. And here I'd you can have your your tagline or something. Here instead of get started, it would say watch the videos. And then I, I would actually put a video right there as well where this little line is. I put a video there. Here it says one on one. Maybe I'd put 
uh, I don't know, reviews or something. I put something there. <laughs> then maybe instead of the text, I'd put three more like video testimonials or something here. Instead of this picture of this girl, I'd put the picture of me. And then it could be like about Benji or something and here. Instead of this picture, I'd put text real quick where it talked about me here. It would be a button to say, go read the bio here. Instead of these three things, it'd be three more videos here. It'd be another video instead of a picture. And so that's all you're doing at first. You're just looking at the overall layout, just how it looks in general, and you're putting your own stuff in there. And so that's what you have to do. So like, look at this layout, Robert, your layout here is just text at the top. Um, then the subscribe thing, then a picture or video picture, well, blog post type thing. And that, that's all it is. Whereas if you look at this layout, it looks really clean. Like someone just goes here. They're like, okay, this looks really nice, really clean cut. So that, that's what I mean by layout. First thing you focus on is the layout of your, of your website. So, so let's go to, to Johnny Ray live. All right. So Johnny, like what I would do here once again, layout, change up the layout. See, as I scroll through, it is, it's not a really good looking layout. So I would change up the layout. And like, once again, you, you can just do a layout like one of these. You have a, a million different layouts, a million different looks. Let's look at this one. First thing first, you just do the layout. That's all you got to do. Like, look at this or look, look how clean this is. The text right there. Look how clean that is. There could be a video right there instead of whatever they put there, or you could just have the name and email. You could do that, but look at this layout. So let's see, see like the way the images are and one on top of the other. And it, it looks cool. Like it, and it just looks, looks cool. All right. So that, that's the first thing is a layout. So that's what I would do with, with your thing, Johnny, change up the layout. Look at the images. I would change up the images. Uh, so like the thumbnail image, I would focus on changing up the, the thumbnails. Oh yeah. And speaking of thumbnails, I can't remember. I think it was Christina who, who asked in terms of what, uh, what, what programs do I use with the thumbnails? I use different photo editing apps on my phone and I can't, I can't show you the phone cause it's on Instagram live right now, but I use different photo editing apps. I use in light. I use, uh, I, I literally use like 10 different apps. Uh, not all at once. I'll use like maybe two of them or something like that. But I have like 10 different apps that I usually use. There's PixArt and Light, uh, Lens Light to have like those those lenses, the the, the thing that, that looks cool on, on an image. So I use those. But basically all you got to do with the apps is just go into, if you have Google or Android, go into Google Play. If you have iPhone, go into the App Store, type in photo editor and just download a ton of free apps, even buy a couple of them. They're only like two, three bucks. It's not that expensive. So just buy a couple of them if you have to, and then just play around with them. That's all you're doing. You're playing around with them. Uh, Pick Monkey, Johnny just mentioned Pick Monkey. Sounds interesting. So yeah, just go play around with them. And, and I would use multiple different apps. So like, let me show you to do. All right. So yeah, let me, let me show you this. So for example, this, this picture, let's blow this one up. So this picture here, it was done with two different apps. Uh, oh no, three different apps. So one app, it was, uh, it was like Photoshop. It was like a Photoshop app which allowed me to basically focus on the color purple. So that's why the purple is standing out and everything else is kind of like black and white ish, not completely black and white, but black and white ish. The purple stands out more. So that's what that app allowed me to do. I saved that. Then I went into another app, Typorama. That's how I get all the text in Typorama. I typed in, how do you get booked to speak? And this, how, the image um, or the word how was actually in front of me. So when I went into Typorama, it was actually, it was literally in front of my face. And, and that's how it was after I used Typorama. Then I opened up another app called Enlight. And with Enlight, I was able to put that text behind me. And so that's how, that's how it turned out here. This one picture, it used three different apps. And by the way, that picture, it took me it, the entire time it took me about 10 minutes to create that because first I took the picture, bam, I got the picture. Then I just opened that up in the app, 
blah, blah, blah. And then I did all that. Actually, it was four different apps, by the way. The fourth one was called Image Sizer or Image Resizer to where I had to resize the image to be the, the thumbnail size of 1280 by 720. So that, that was the Image Resizer, right? And so it was four different apps to create that one thing, which was done in about 10 minutes, if that. Um, and that, that's all you're really doing in terms of creating images like that. So uh, there was that one. Let's see. Let's go back. So like all of these, these images are created with different apps. Let's see another one. Uh, did you? Uh, yeah. So I'll basically just, just remember that all you got to do is just download a couple apps and just, just play around with them and you'll be able to create some really cool images on your phone and you'll be able to do it really quick. So in the beginning, it's going to take you some time. Hmm, couldn't find that one. In the beginning, it'll take you time, but eventually you'll get really good and you'll be able to do it like really fast as well. All right, so that we're, we're done with that. All right, so that's what I would do with, with your website, Johnny. Change up the layout, focus on the images. I do that. Let's, let's go to this website here. So this, it, it starts out cool. Uh, AT, you, you, like here, I like the header. It, it starts out cool with the header. And then it's like, well, what else? There's nothing else there, right? And so uh, the header is cool, but once again, it's like, well, what else? So that, that's, that's what you have to think. And even with the header, I would even maybe change up the header a, a little bit. And this will kind of depend on you in terms of if you wanted to change that up uh, with the, the header. But imagine if your header, the way it dips like that, imagine, wait, like, curves like that. That's, that looks cool as all hell. Imagine if you also had kind of like this in the background as well of that header. So like the, the collage in the background, or you just had something, an image or, or something in the background uh, of your header. All right. And so here you say, uh, hit them in the mouth with your success, subscribe to our newsletter. So this uh, AT, if you're trying to, so you said subscription page. Yeah. So this, if you're just trying to get people to subscribe, once again, it's kind of like subscribe for what? Right. So it, it, it's like, what am I getting? On the other hand, so let me show you the difference. So there there's this and then there's this. So let me show you the difference between getting people to subscribe. And actually, so here, this is how you do not do it. Uh, you only want to do something like this on your home page. But the way you get people to subscribe isn't by doing this, not by saying sign up to our newsletter, stay updated. That's not how you get people to subscribe. Not, not at all. You only do this on your on your home page. Right. But if you want people to subscribe, like once again, you don't do this either. So subscribe for daily emails on the business of speaking. This is how you don't get people to subscribe. You put this on your home page and the rest of your home page has all the other stuff. Right. This is how you get people to subscribe. You say something very, very specific. Here's 100 leads that you're going to get, 100 leads for speakers, download this list of events to find more speaking gigs, right? So it's very specific in terms of the problem that I'm solving for, for people. It's like, here, download a list of leads. If you're a speaker, download a list of leads. Uh, you don't get them to subscribe just by saying subscribe to our newsletter because th there's no reason for them to subscribe. Uh, on, on the other hand, let's say like, um, like Christina, let's say uh, if I'm Christina and I say the problem I solve is... Uh, helping, helping women catch their cheating husbands or something like that, right? So then the the actual newsletter or not the newsletter, the opt-in page would say something like that. It would say, "Here's the seven steps that you want to take to catch your husband cheating, uh, to catch a cheating husband, right?" So you would do something like that. It's a very specific thing that they're getting with the newsletter. You don't just say sign up to a newsletter, all right? So there's that. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, like, like, like I said, the, the homepage, the homepage design, the way that looked was, was pretty cool. Okay. And then once again, I'm looking at the layout here, the layout, it's like, huh, you, you want to improve the, the layout. Okay. So that, that's, that's the big thing for, for your website. Once again, that's a big thing for most people's websites is just the layout of their website. It, it's kind of like, it, it doesn't make them look like a top notch speaker or anything. And, and once again, let me show you one of my favorite websites is Lewis House's website. So let me show you the layout of his website in case you guys haven't seen this one. Let's let this thing load. So like, look at the layout of his website. So there's the header, 
You scroll down, like everything about his website looks really cool, right? Everything about his website looks good. So this is what you call a really cool layout, all right? So of course he has like you enter your name and email, then you, you can start reading more about him with the bio. Look at the image, there's the black and white image, the text here on the left, the, the way the text is in general, like all of it just looks clean. Like notice the way this text is, how the text, it covers this image a little bit, but it doesn't cover it to a point where you can't see the image or you can't see the text, it just looks cool. And then even as I'm like hovering over this, notice how that moves and stuff. So it, it's the, the layout of his entire website just looks clean, just looks nice. So imagine if your website looked exactly like this. There's a header, the opt-in page. When they scroll down, there's a bio section. When they scroll down more, there's another part here, whatever you want to put there. There's two webs, or, I mean, two videos there. Here's your blog video that you have here or podcast video. Here it says podcast. Here it says events. You have pictures here that overlap each other. So imagine your, your layout look exactly like this. This is a really good looking layout. So that, that's the first thing that you want to focus on with your, uh, with your websites. All right. And then obviously, if you're going to actually do the uh, if you want people to opt in, you just got to understand that there's you need to create two different websites, just like what Joy said, two different websites. If you're solving a specific problem, doing coaching, consulting, you create a separate website for that and, an, and a separate website for the motivational speaking, sales speaking, leadership speaking. They have to be completely different because think about from the standpoint of the person going to your website. What do they want? What are they looking for? When I go to your website, what am I looking for? Am I looking for someone to help me with my marriage? Am I looking for someone to help me with the fear of public speaking? Am I looking for someone to, uh, to, to increase my sales? Am I looking for someone to help me build an online program? Am I looking for a motivational speaker? Each one of those things are going to have to say different things. Uh, they're they're going to have to say different things. Each one of those, the marriage is going to have to say, here's how we help your marriage or here's how we help you stay married. Here's how you catch your cheating husband, whatever it is, is going to have to say that. The one that talks about uh, the fear of public speaking, it's going to say, hey, do you get on, on stage or, or hey, you probably don't even get on stage because you're so afraid of public speaking. Uh, maybe you're sitting there, you're sweating and you're like, holy crap, I don't, and you blank out. So that's what that page is going to talk about. The one where it's talking about selling online programs, it's going to say, hey, do you, do you have an online program? But for some reason, it's not selling. You're not generating any sales, no matter how many ads you create, no matter how many webinars you do, it's still not selling. And then you have a website for motivational speaking where it says, hey, are you looking for the greatest motivational speaker alive, the funniest motivational speaker, the most interactive motivational speaker? So each one of those websites are going to say different things based on what people are going to the website for. If you try to put all those together, they're going to go to your website and be like, what the hell does this person do? That's what's going to happen. They're going to be like, well, what do they do? Because they're, they're going to see everything. They're like, well, I don't need that. Like I, they're like, I'm just looking for someone to help me sell my online program. I don't need marriages. I don't need a motivational speaker. I don't need fear of public speaking. I'm just looking to sell my online program. And then they're just going to click away from your website. So that's why you have to have different websites that solve the, the different problems. Okay. So just keep that in mind. So, uh, let's, let's see how much time we got. 10 minutes. All right. So that's, those are the steps in terms of in terms of that. Let's go. Let's go here again. So after you have the website, then you're going to start the prospecting phase. So remember, you set up your systems and everything. You have the website. So now you're you're ready to go. Like you're, you're ready to start. And then you're going to start prospecting. At this point, you're going to start building a list of events, 50, 100, however many you want to build. You're going to contact those events using the email templates that you set up. So remember, you wrote your email templates way up here in the very beginning. Now, when you, you start contacting them, you're just going to use those email templates and you're going to repeat that cycle over and over and over and over again. You're just going to keep repeating it over and over. When you contact them, this is the dangerous part. This is where if you didn't watch the video yesterday, yesterday, did we talk about pitching events? Uh, yeah, if you, if you didn't watch the video yesterday, uh, then make sure you watch it because when you contact events, you have to learn how to pitch. Dang it. My phone is over there. I want to show you guys a pitch, but, um, Basically, it was a really bad pitch. Uh, the, the worst pitches 
focus on they focus on themselves. The people who pitch really bad, they're thinking about me. It's like me, 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 me. Here's what I do. Here's my story. Here's my thing. Here's all about me. The way you pitch is you focus 100% on them. 100%. Adopt the mentality of Jeff Bezos, where Jeff Bezos, he says, he's like, it's 100% customer focused. He's like, customers are number one, shareholders are number two. And in, in reality, the way most businesses operate, they operate flipped like that. So shareholders are number one, customers are number two. And, and so what, the reason why Jeff Bezos is number one, number one richest guy in the world, is because he built the business around focusing on the customers. And it's 100% true. Like, everyone says that. Everyone's like, yeah, we focus on customers. But with Amazon, it's very clear that they do. And you can see that with their customer support. If you ever have any problems, you just contact them. They're like, I'm sorry about that. We'll send you a brand new one. You're like, damn, cool. Thank you. And so that's what happens with, with them. You have to focus 100% on the people that you are trying to persuade, whether you're trying to get hired as a motivational speaker, whether you're trying to solve a marriage problem, no matter what problem you're trying to solve, the more you focus on them, the easier it's going to be to write stuff on your website, to write the copy on your website, the easier it's going to be to create a video, the easier it's going to be for all of that stuff. You focus on them 100%, right? Any questions before we are done for today? I'll wait a few seconds for the questions, uh, but that, that's essentially the, the process. I'm going to talk more about the referral system and what to do after you get booked at events because that's the thing that, that a lot of people don't don't know what to do after that point. It's like they get booked at the event and then all of their marketing kind of just stops at that moment. So it's like, all right, cool, I got the gig. And then bam, the marketing just stops. They, they don't do anything after that. They don't know how to get spinoff gigs, referral gigs. They don't know how to do that. So we're going to talk more about that. Remember, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific time, we are doing these Facebook Lives. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. All right, so I will see you guys on Monday. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Take care. Monday. 9 a.m. Pacific time. I'll see you guys Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. In case I didn't say it enough, just one more time, 9 a.m. Pacific time on Monday. Take care.